coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. What other Game Boy game should look like a 1960s Christmas special? It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellis, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how are you? So good. So, so good. happy to be here. Yep. It's a good day to be here. Um, a little bit of housekeeping up mm-hmm. at the top. Yes. Next month, two things are happening. Yeah. One, Retro Month. Oh, weird my gosh. Weird sequels. Every Thursday mm-hmm. in March, we're going to be talking about another weird retro sequel. And this shouldn't be uh, a surprise, but Mark and I will be talking about these sequels. That's right. Together. Right. These will be Mark and Patrick Productions. And the reason we're making that very important distinction is because for the first time in the history of the show, our schedules do not line up. That's right. And for the month of March, the news episodes... Patrick will be here. That's right. With a new with a great co-host. A new one every week. Every week. Look, if you don't like one of them, the next week <laughs> will be a different host. So on Tuesday, you'll get your news episodes. That's right. On Thursday, you'll get your topic episodes. I will be here for Thursdays. Yes. And then in April, I'll be back for news too. Right. In April, it all goes back to normal. So those who are change averse, don't worry. So are we. Yeah. We'll change and then change right back. Um, But uh, the Thursdays for this month, uh, the first week, we're going to do Zelda 2. The second week, we're going to do Super Mario Land 2. The third week is Star Tropics 2. And the fourth week is Castlevania 2. So please play along with us if you can. Uh, If you can't, I'm sorry. Star Tropics 2 is hard to come by. (laughs) I get it. Um, But email us if you're playing along and let us know what you think of these games. Uh, If you're not playing these games and you have weird memories of them, uh, that's also fun for us, too. You can write to us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at at gmail.com. Another thing you can do with that email address, of course, you can always try to borrow my copy of Sonic Forces. That's right. And now's a great time to do it. Because any time's a great time to borrow Patrick's uh, copy of Sonic Forces. Truer words were never spoken, Mark. Um, look, that's all the housekeeping stuff. We got to get to what we want to talk about because we are going to be determining which Game Boy games should join the uh, elite uh, pantheon of games like Link's Awakening and be remade <laughs> for current generation hardware. <laughs> So we're, of course, doing this topic because the Link's Awakening remake that was announced at the most recent Nintendo Direct looks awesome. Yeah, we're excited about it. We both like Link's Awakening, um, and we both want another excuse to play this game, right? Um, and uh, when when I proposed the the topic for today's show, um, I, I used exactly the, the phrasing of what game should get the uh, Link's Awakening treatment. Now, I just want to know how literally you took that. So, <clears throat> I don't think all of these games have to look like Link's Awakening. Sure, sure. Uh, but, but mostly what... So, what we're seeing in Link's Awakening is what appears to be a tile-for-tile tile remake of the game with just uh, updated graphics uh, and probably some updated, like, functionality, quality of yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, tile-for-tile tile, tile to the point that when you're in dungeons, a lot of... Uh, outside of the grid that would fit on a game boy it's just black that's right like uh, in the yeah. in the world map on like the overview when you're rocking when you're walking around the world map that takes up the entire screen yeah and it seems like it scrolls a little bit too so like mm-hmm. they are doing a a couple different things um there uh but like you know we can there are also points in the trailer that we see link holding both the sword and the shield and jumping uh which means that you are able to equip more than two items at a time, which was a failing <laughs> of the original Game Boy version. Um, so yeah, we, we are allowing for quality of life uh, Im- improvements, but for the most part, we're just, we just want to see these games uh, come back in a prettier skin. Right? Yes, absolutely. Um, 
Do we need to get two very obvious games out of the way right up front, Mark? Uh, probably. I can't wait to hear what these are. You don't think that Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages are uh, obvious oh, candidates for the same treatment? That's interesting because I had I picked a Zelda game, but it's a little bit of a cheat because it's a Game Boy Advance game, and I said Minish oh. Cap. Oh, okay. Um, so tell me, tell me why Minish Cap? Because I think I think you could do the Oracle games uh, just exactly the same. Use literally the exact same engine that you're using for uh, Link's Awakening. And just like plop them out, we we'll be happy to play uh, a, another uh, you know two D Zelda adventure yeah in that, that way. style and it, yeah especially being the games like the versions of the games being able to communicate with each other without having to input like a sixteen digit code um, from beating one to like is is and and what's the reward for that one dungeon or something <laughs> like that yeah something like that. Uh, but tell me, tell me why uh, Minish Cap. So for me, it's the mystique of the unknown. Yes. Uh, to a little diversion to explain why this is true. Uh, there was a Disney animated movie that was released in the 80s to theaters called The Black Cauldron. Yes. Or at one point we released as Taron and the Magic Sword. So this is uh, famously Disney's first uh, PG-rated animated movie. It was made right before the kind of renaissance of Disney animation with starting with the little mermaid and it's not a very good movie, but it bombed so hard. It had such a negative reputation that it wasn't released on video or DVD until like the early two thousands. Yeah. And so as a fan of Disney growing up, like I had heard about this movie, but I never like seen it. And so when it was finally released, I absolutely snatched up my, Man, it might even been a VHS that it was released on. I don't even think I bought it on DVD first. Yeah, sure. And um, watched it. Was not very good. But there was just like this mystique about like, ooh, this like animated movie I've never seen. Zelda Minish Cap is a Zelda game that I've never finished, but is in the style of those of like uh, 16-bit graphics because it was a Game Boy Advance game. Yep. And so that really hits like a nostalgia sweet spot for me in a way that, like, Skyward Sword, another Zelda game that I haven't played, um, definitely does not. Here's, here's the thing about uh, Minish Cap, which is also a game that I, I have not finished either. There was something about the execution of the art style that did not work for me. Um, I like, you know, 16 bit graphics, obviously, um, but I, I, honestly, I don't know what it is. There's something about the art design in that game that doesn't work for me. And it's worth pointing out that uh, Minish Cap, like Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, was developed by Capcom. That's right. It was like the last Capcom Zelda game that has ever existed. Right. And maybe there'll be one in the future. Who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, if, if for that game to get a cosmetic overhaul uh, would do wonderful things for me. Because um, I'm, I'm sure there's a good game in there, but I never uh, was able to like power through it and actually get to that good game um, just because it looked the way it did. Yeah, yes, that's a good point, because even though it was trying to ape that 16-bit style, the Game Boy Advance wasn't a 16-bit system, so they could do much more, and it didn't yeah. always pay off. Yeah, I mean, there is there is that weird little, like, halfway where, like, uh, you know, the uh, necessity is the mother of invention, and part of what looks so good about uh, A Link to the Past is based on their limitations. And so maybe freed of those limitations, like everything just looks a little too like kind of chunky, cartoony. I don't know. There was something about Minish Cap. And if there are Minish Cap defenders out there that say, no, and I know there looks, are there and there must be, um, let us know. Uh, but like specifically the, the way it looked was a, a hang up for me. But yeah, I mean, to answer the premise of this ep episode, absolutely put three of them in a Capcom Zelda collection. Oh, yeah. 100%. Can I propose, while we're on that, a different um, Capcom Game Boy collection? Uh, it, it, this is uh, a answering the question of what should get um, the Link's Awakening treatment. Uh, the Mega Man games on Game Boy, uh, specifically starting with um, the first one, which is called Wily's Revenge, um, which uh, features four of, of the Robot Masters from the original uh, Mega Man game on the NES and four uh, Robot Masters from um, Mega Man 2 uh, all jammed together in a game with all new levels and new Dr. Wily levels and a new boss 
um, like a new robot master who's like a ninth master. Um, uh, so they they made four games in the Mega Man series just like this. We you're borrowing two masters from uh, one game in the NES series and four masters from another game in the NES series, adding a new robot master, all new levels, and then the fifth game in the series includes. All new, brand new robot masters that are not available in any other Mega Man game. With all new levels and all new theming, they're like themed off the planets. Um, and the, this is a game that if you didn't have a copy of Mega Man 5 for your Game Boy, you were never going to play again. And these games aren't collected, uh, you know, or even really repackaged on uh, different virtual consoles. Yeah, can, can you buy... Some of these on virtual console? I, I, I don't think so. I, I I think it's possible that the first one is available. On they probably the, just did the, did the NES games if they did any of them. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Well, and, you know, the the uh, Mega Man games have been getting those legacy collections uh, in uh, for the original series and for the X series, but the Game Boy series never got that. Um, and I do think it would be a tough sell to just bring those games the way they looked on game boy to modern hardware but like if you give them i mean if they dress them up the way Mega Man 11 looks you could release any one of those games on switch right now and it would sell like crazy two questions for you yes <clears throat> did these game boy games uh play like Mega Man on the nes like were the physics the same or was it a yes. mario mario land situation? no physics totally the same uh the same like level of difficulty these are basically just five new Mega Man games and then did Mega Man 11 also have those same sort of like general feel or was it like a oh, new yeah. super mario brothers situation no where, no, no. Like... Me- Mega Man 11 feels very much like a, an original Mega Man game so you have just use the Mega Man 11 engine. Just use that engine. I know it's that easy. It's Yes, look, all you need to do is go to the original uh, Mega Man Game Boy files, uh, right-click on them, <laughs> convert to Mega Man 11. You dummies. You dummies, just do it, cowards. <laughs> um, but I mean, that's yeah, it's, it, to, to me, that the, those games are um, like lost little gems that uh, I feel like no one even talks about anymore, or no one talks about, period. There's no any more to that. Um, and it would be a good way to uh, bring them back. So my first pick is maybe an obvious one, and it's a game that we're actually going to be talking about in more detail during uh, our retro month next month. But it's Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins. Yeah. And um, it's a fun game. It has its, like... It's a weird sequel to Mario Brothers as you know it, and it's a weird sequel to Super Mario Land, the first one. Yeah. Um, it has more of like a Super Mario Brothers 3 art style, but what I would really like to see it, I think it's a really cool game. Yeah. And I think it would be really cool to see it in a heretofore unseen new retro inspired 2d mario art style wow okay all right <laughs> like if nintendo has uh-huh. creates a new new super mario brothers series that eschews the um three like 3d-esque models of the new super mario brothers series but doesn't want to go full 8 or 16 bit but has an entirely new house style for 2D Mario games. Ooh, that would be so nice. You know what th- they could do, like what art style they could sort of ape and I would be cool with, is the uh, Game Boy Advanced, uh, Super Mario Advance, which is the, the Game Boy Advance version of um, Super Mario Brothers 2, um, which uh, is a little bit more detailed than the Mario All-Stars version of uh, Mario 2. Um, just the characters are like, bigger and have like a little bit more shading on them um i think that would be a really like nice fit for that game yeah it's like look i get why new super mario brothers exists and i understand why it's like that those 3d models look we get it (laughs) but uh i would love to see something that's not that yeah totally yeah uh, absolutely and i mean the it this could also be um it could be anything it could look like a Rankin Bass, uh, you know, production like Link's Awakening. It could they could do it in the style of like Paper Mario. They could do it in the star style of Wario Land. Shake it, yeah. Where it's like very detailed, hand drawn cell animation. Yeah. So it's like Mario's running through a two D animated 
um movie yeah you know like that'd be really cool yeah i think that that would be awesome and uh uh, again like one of the hang-ups of playing this game again is that like there are times it doesn't look so great uh but like the gameplay of it is really cool and really fun so like why not why not um i'm gonna stay in that same sort of uh vein and just go with uh wario land uh, which is super mario land 3 um another game that it could look just like wario land shake it just put that game just put it out i i feel like there is a a a weird like underselling of the wario land series in in nintendo's history um that it is largely relegated to uh handhelds or um like i don't remember there being a big fanfare around wario land shake it no, it I but wasn't Wireland Shake it also clearly like a GameCube game that was ported to Wii because it was not it was like in a four by three ratio. Like, yeah, that's right. It was like four the, by three ratio. I, I, I also that. think it's because Wario Land, the Wario Land series, I believe was developed by like R and D one, which are normally like the hardware guys who occasionally ventured into making games, sure. and so it's it's not really championed by like a Miyamoto or something like that. Yeah. Well, and it is like, it is definitely a different like take on platformers. It has different priorities. The enemies don't kill you. You know, you mostly run into them so you can pick them up and throw them at each other. Um, and you know, they're, they're all about collecting coins. Um, but kind of to that end, and I know this is the second one of these that I'm proposing be a collection of games, but give me a Wario land all stars, man. Um, like just pretty up the art style and give me Wario Land, which was originally on Game Boy, Super Mario Land 3, Wario Land, Wario Land 2, which was on Game Boy Color, Wario Land 3, which is also on Game Boy Color, and give me that virtual boy Wario Land. I mean, here's the thing is people love Wario. Yes. They really do. Like, if they gave a four-game Wario Land collection, it could totally be like Mario All-Stars where they just put the ROMs. Yes. On a disc. Yeah. And everybody, and it would sell like 2 million copies. It would be, I mean, the, they would need to address, I do think the, uh, the Game Boy Color ones um, have uh, visibly aged worse than the Game Boy one. And we don't even need to talk about how badly the Virtual Boy game has aged, Are you visually about speaking. Be, like the, because in color, they were using such garish colors. Yeah. I mean, like I've, I've got Wario Land 2 on my uh, 3DS and like, it's fun, but like it looks terrible. Like it just looks like a bad game. Um, so yeah, give me those uh give me those hand drawn cells like Wario Land Shake It or anything else. You could even give me Wario in the new Super Mario Brothers style, and I would be fine. That'd be with fun. It. That'd yeah. actually be really fun. Because we haven't seen anything like that. No, I mean, and you know, that's like the same uh model that we get in like, you know, Mario Party or whatever. Um, so like the assets are out there. Um, yeah, that, so that, 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 that's my next pick for this. So my next pick is a game that I haven't actually played. And that's part of the reason why I would like to see this redone. Good answer. Is Donkey Kong, also known as Donkey Kong 94. Donkey Kong 94 is also on my list. Donkey Kong 94 is a great game. So you've, you've that's not played it That's what I've heard. No, because here's the thing is I have a, um, Love-hate relationship with the original Donkey Kong mm-hmm. in that when I encountered it as a kid, I was always really bad at it. And so, and I never owned it or went to an arcade that had it. And uh, I was never like an arcade kid. My parents would never just take me to a place and give me money to like put into a video game. Yeah. And so, um, like, I have never gotten that far into it except when we played together. I don't really have any fondness for it. Yeah. Like, Donkey Kong Country is the true Donkey Kong to me. Uh, but I've heard so m- many good things about this game, and I'm sure it's available on Virtual Console, but, like, make it prettier. <laughs> yeah, d- I mean, definitely make it prettier. One of the things that, like, uh, Donkey Kong 94 does have, like, the unfortunate thing of uh, tying itself to the original Donkey Kong because it that does not really do it justice right like the original donkey kong is very much an arcade game right um it's about uh learning the timing and like executing some like sort of like lightning fast reflex uh sort of things to to reach a goal uh and donkey kong 94 is uh all about uh being a puzzle platformer where your tools are mario's uh athletic ability right so like mario can do the sort of like handstand jump um or, you know, like the, the squatting, like, you know, big, big jump. 
He can do the reverse cartwheel to get a little bit of extra height. He can do a triple jump to jump like higher. And it's really just about using uh, Mario's different uh, like jumping abilities to traverse small like self-contained levels and uh, like reach the goal, which like is not that's just not a mode that we've seen Mario be in uh, ever since or even really before. Like it is a, a wholly unique kind of game. Um, and it's insane that Nintendo never revisits that because like it's just so good. And ni- Donkey Kong 94 is held in such high regard. Like just make it look nicer and put the game out. And I mean, we're being a little, you know, flippant by being just like, just make it look nicer. But I think the reason for me that that is important is Nintendo makes a lot of these games, not all of them, makes a lot of them available on the virtual console. Yeah. But the f- it's a hard sell to get somebody who's new to gaming or younger to be like, totally. hey, you're used to all these like amazing looking games. Now uh, go back and play like a Game Boy game, right? You and I have nostalgia for it. You were talking about before we started recording that just watching video of certain Game Boy games like really takes you back to a certain place and time. Yeah, absolutely. But I understand how just like black and white movies can be a barrier for entry for some people that like a really old game like this can be uh, like a turnoff. And unlike movies, we have the benefit of like, you can improve these games yes. by making them look better a lot of times. Yeah, and, yeah, a- absolutely. And yeah, it's just, it's it's such a weird shame that like, um that's a a style of game that like nintendo hasn't really gone back to like you can maybe argue that the captain toad games are like spiritually similar to donkey kong 94 but like man it, it would just be great to see that again also if that sparks a new like a new series or like a new direction for like mario and donkey kong that'd be wonderful yeah that'd be awesome uh, all right, next one on my list. Donkey Kong 94, we already talked about. Uh, Kid Icarus 2, Gods and Monsters. Um, the art style that I would like to see this one done in is, of course, in the style of Kid Icarus Uprising. Make it look awesome. Put as much like uh, a spectacle and splash and just flashing lights and uh, crazy monsters as are in that game. And just give me the big scrawling um, Kid Icarus uh, 2, which is, like, bigger and weirder than the original Kid Icarus. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, just just do that. Yeah, I mean, I think there's precedent for this with the uh, Samus Returns yeah, absolutely. remake that came out just a couple of years ago. Yeah, this one is actually a lot more like, yeah, if they did what... Although Samus Returns kind of uh, redid the game from, like, the ground up, right? Like, a, a different map um even like kind of different priorities um and with like that that cool like action uh like it had that counter um and i don't even think you would need to do like that much more to um make this game uh playable just like give it the, a nice fresh coat of paint or here's the uh second option is you can do what uh the kid icarus 3d classics uh version did with it which uh I've talked about before on the show that the uh, 3DS version of the original Kid Icarus, which is just called Kid Icarus 3D Classics, um, gives a little bit of like depth of field. It uh, gives you some like nice uh, images in the background of every level, and it fixes Pitt's jump just a little bit, uh, and then the game is infinitely, infinitely more playable. That would also be an acceptable way to uh, play uh, the second game. Uh, speaking of games that maybe have a lot of ambition, but not, uh, their britches were too big for the time. Mm, britches. I'm proposing a uh, elaboration on Final Fantasy Legend. Final Fantasy Legend. So, I want to keep up. Uh, Legend is the, uh, the, the um, turn-based one, right? Yeah, so I think it's the yeah. one that we have talked about on this show before mm-hmm. when we just discussed weird games with Greg Smith. That's right. Um, yeah, so this game uh, feels a lot less like a uh, Final Fantasy game and more like a saga game, which I believe... Because it is. There we go. <laughs> uh, that's, that's how they're uh, sold in uh, Japan. Um, and uh, saga games, for those uh, like not familiar, um, they are... Uh, Octopath Traveler is essentially a modern saga game. 
um, which means a little bit more like open ended uh, in how you explore the world and a little bit less. Um, the narrative is less about the characters and more about like their world that they're in. Um, what is it about uh, Legends that makes you want to uh, go back to it? I think some of the systems sound really interesting. Like, isn't it like things turn into monsters and you can't really control their level, their like abilities are leveling up. Like it just happens. Yeah. So there, there are times when you're fighting, mon- if you have monsters in your party and you don't have to have monsters in your party, <laughs> um, but if you have monsters in your party, uh, you can defeat other monsters and then you, sometimes you'll get meat of another monster uh, and your monsters will eat that meat and become a new monster, uh, which is insanity. Uh, the game is also built around a tower that uh, goes up into the sky, and on each like level that you exit of this tower is like a new world. Um, so like it ends up being like four or five, I forget exactly. Because you're trying to kill God, right? You're trying to kill God. You know, a classic story of God is out there, you should try to kill him. <laughs> uh, and every level of this is like a, a whole new world to explore with like discrete little problems that you solve and then get back in this tower uh, and just keep going upward until you can fight God, uh, which like, yeah, g- give me that game. Yeah. I just like the idea of taking somebody's grand ambition that was maybe too big for the system they were working on. Mm-hmm. And I know that the saga games have continued and they were able to uh, maybe refine the mechanics that were very raw in final fantasy legend. But yeah, I, Billy Wilder said, you know, base I'm paraphrasing and butchering here, but basically like, there should be remakes, but we should remake bad movies, right? Yeah. Movies that didn't work, but had good premises. And I feel like that's kind of what I'm looking to do here. Yeah. Well, and this is also an example of um, there. This is uh, you could remake this. And then if it's successful, if it's a successful artistically, if it's successful financially, there are two more games in this series that you could do it with. Free money. Free money. Hey, Square Enix, you love remaking <laughs> games. Why haven't they done this already? <laughs> this one's actually quite confusing to me. Um, okay, next on my list. Look, I know I'm a broken record, and I will always bring up this series whenever I can. Of course I'm talking about Battletoads. There was a Battletoads game on the Game Boy. It had wholly different levels from the Battletoads game that appeared on the NES. Um, it is no less punishing. Uh, but it sure is uglier. And that's saying a lot because the Battletoads games are always kind of ugly. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I, I'm, I'm hurting for a new Battletoads game anyway, which by the way, to refer back to our earlier conversation, uh, from Tuesday about Game Pass possibly coming to, um, Switch, Switch, uh, that means that I'll be able to play the new Battletoads game when it comes out on my Switch. That's right. And since Microsoft and Nintendo are seemingly becoming very chummy, maybe they can remake the Game Boy oh, Battletoads yeah. game as well. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Uh, here's, here's what we really need is a Battletoads collection. It could have <laughs> NES Battletoads. It could have the Game Boy Battletoads. It could have two different versions of Battletoads and Battle Maniacs because you know the Genesis and the SNES couldn't play the same game. They had to be different. Meh, uh, that's that's all I want now. Okay, well, piggybacking off of your like very specific pick, mine is David Crane's Rescue of Princess Blobette, A Boy and His Blob, which any time that we've done a Game Boy episode from the beginning of this show, that's right, I have brought up as my personal white whale, but a white whale that I've been able to see the ending of it by watching a playthrough on YouTube. Of course, and being hit with nostalgic feels right away. Yep. Um, so do you want this one to look like the, uh, cause there was a boy in his blob, blob game that came out on, uh, Wii, Wii right? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, that was done by Majesco. That seems like a very different sort of game. Mm. Um, it had a hug button. It looked very cute. I think it was well received, but no, I'm kind of, what do you got against hug buttons? No, I love hug buttons. Mark, what? Especially on like the switch or something. There would be so many more buttons that could be used to hug. <laughs> Um, no, I, I think it would be fun. So this is again, very specific. A boy in his blob, the, um, like title screen is riffing off of Indiana Jones. Yeah. And I think it would be fun to like play that up. Okay. So make it feel like a, um, like, uh, 
adventure game. Sure, that, you know, like an old adventure serial. Yeah, with an S. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> not like uh, some sort of dangerous Rice Krispies. Right. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying at all. Um, yeah, that would be fun. Uh, and I mean, we don't have a lot of those kinds of games right now, right? No, where uh, you're a boy who's throwing jelly beans into a blob that that eat the different flavors of jelly beans turns it into um like a different contraption we don't have a ton of those games which now that i'm saying it out loud seems like it could be a great microtransaction game oh yeah oh you want a strawberry flavored jelly bean oh yeah (laughs) yeah pay for it also like a good sponsorship opportunity you just team up with jelly belly (laughs) and look they're always looking for a new way to sell berry cherry buttered popcorn juicy pear they want to get these beans into your hands but uh, Cross promote it with Harry Potter. You can do Bernie <laughs> Bots every flavor beans. Everybody's wearing wizard hats. It's. I mean, this seems like a double. They're slam pooping dunk themselves to me. and making it go away. <laughs> uh, no, but the for real though, the part like uh, part of the reason I think this is a good candidate is because it is a very opaque game. Like yes. as a kid, I just remember running around and I would get stuck in the same place. Never had any idea what I was supposed to do. It wasn't until I watched that YouTube walkthrough that I was like oh, that kind of makes sense in like a Castlevania 2 logic sort of way right. where you can see how they got there, but it's not apparent. And I like the idea of a boy in his blob. And so I think with a modern presentation that actually has like the ability to explain things to you in a logical way, yeah, that it could be a lot of fun. Um, that's a good pick, Mark. I've got another, uh, uh, another collection pick. I'm sorry, I cheated on all of these. <laughs> um, but uh, so my my next pick is the three Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games that came out on the Game Boy. They are Fall of the Foot Clan, Back from the Sewers, and Radical Rescue. Um, so one of the things that uh, I am working on right now um, is I, I'm I'm working with um, IDW, who is the the company that is currently publishing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics, um, to create. Uh, an oral history of the eight years that they've been publishing uh, Turtle Comics. Um, and they're going to appear in issues 93 through 100 of the series. Uh, I'm very excited about it. It means that I am up to my eyeballs in Turtle Comics and Turtle Media just all the time. Like, I'm watching uh, the old TV shows, um, some of which are very good, some of which are very bad. I'm reading uh, comics from both the current run, from the original Mirage run, from the Archie run, um, from the image run. So like I'm, I'm all over the place with turtles right now. Um, and, uh, I have a lot of nostalgia for the, uh, original NES Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is, uh, sort of like half top down, um, like action adventure game and half side scrolling, uh, just like punishingly difficult, uh, levels. Um, and that part that like side scrolling you pick which character you're playing as platforming action uh style game that's what all three of the game boy games are they lose that sort of like top down uh, opaqueness and just become platforming action games and i had the first one of these um which i already forgot the name of fall of the foot clan um and uh i loved it and uh you know couldn't really get very far, but uh, you know, it was it was a, a a super fun game, and I would love to see the three of these games using any of the art styles that they've used in the IDW uh, comic series. Um, and there's already precedent for um, uh, Mateo Santoloco's designs for the turtles um, being used in video games. There, I forget actually the the name of the game. They uh, Platinum made it and came out a couple years ago. Not super well received as far as like the gameplay is concerned. But, like, the game looks and sounds awesome, uh, and I would love to see uh, just those visual styles come to a simple uh, 2D action platforming game. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yep, 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 yep. That, that's my pick. Uh, alternately, if they just look like old Kevin Eastman drawings, like, I would be there for that, too. <laughs> uh, do you have any more, Mark? No, that's, that's exhaust my list. Um, uh, one last thing that I will say, uh, and I think you and I have talked about this before. Donkey Kong Land. Um, you know, we uh, we both like the Donkey Kong Country series. Obviously, we are sometimes wrong about uh, the uh, Animal Buddies. Um, but, like, there are three Donkey Kong Country games on the uh, Game Boy, all called Donkey Kong Land 1, 2, and 3. 
um, that I have virtually no experience with. And when I try to play them on the 3DS Virtual Console, they look awful <laughs> because they're doing what the uh, Super Nintendo did, which is take these pre-rendered um, models and just digitize them. Uh, so on the Super Nintendo, it looked bad, but we were blown away by it at the time. And when you go back to revisit it, it is rough. Um, but on the Game Boy, it's incomprehensible. It didn't stand a chance. No, th- th- it is so much like just visual noise. You cannot see what is happening in those games. Uh, you take a uh, Tropical Freeze uh, a coat of paint and put that over. Yeah, right click. Right click, save as. <laughs> this isn't that hard. <laughs> What if that's the game that Retro's been working on, is a Donkey Kong Land trilogy? I would love that. That'd be so good. Um, but yeah, that, that, that would be my, my last pick. And I think with that, we've named every good Game Boy game. <laughs> is that right? So, yeah, this also doubles <laughs> as a um, Nintendo Game Boy Classic Edition <laughs> wish list episode. Which I believe we've also already done. <laughs> All right, uh, those are our picks. Mark, let's get out of this part of the show. Hey, uh, did we miss any? Probably. Uh, You know who could tell us? You guys. You guys could tell us. uh, Write to us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at at gmail.com and uh, let us know what Game Boy games you think should be given the Link's Awakening treatment and what that even means. Uh, We're pretty loose with it today, I think. Right? As every day. Yes. Uh, Loose all day, every day. Um... Look, if you like this episode, you should rate and review and subscribe. Actually, do those things no matter what. If you like the episode, this is the if statement, then you should share it on social media or wherever you share stuff. Um, On Twitter, I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at Nincart Society. Um, We're also on Facebook. You can just check out the page there as Nintendo Cartridge Society. Mark, this is your last episode for a little bit. I know. Well. A week, because I will be back on Thursday. You will be back on Thursday. Um, Know that I hold you all very dearly in my hearts. Right, and we will miss you while you are gone, even though we will hear your voice still once a week. Uh, all right. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by 8 Betty. You can get more of his music by going to 8 or by listening right now. From my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying thanks for listening. <laughs>